Hi guys, I'm going to zoom in to Macy a little bit. Okay. So, looking at this, I'm hoping that this ring light's working. Okay. Can I get it tilted a little bit? No, that's as far as it tilts down. Okay, we are going to do Twin Tuesday with Macy and Maisie again. Um, we are going to do this cute llama set. It is a mustard um, fleece jacket with white polka dot, or no, they're white hearts. I thought they were polka dots. And it's got this fleecy white applique with a little llama. And the llama has a little mustard bow in her hair. And she's got a little pink face. And then to go with that is just this plain white onesie with llamas all over it. There's a set of llamas, one without a mustard bow and one with a mustard bow. And then there's just some little straggler, single llamas around there. And it's got the scallop sleeves. It's a short sleeve shirt, so it scallops at the top of the sleeves. And then around the neck with a white little bow and little gray um, cotton pants to go with it. So I'm gonna take off her cute bunny outfit. I'm gonna take off her bow too. Did I spray conditioner in her hair last time? I didn't even realize it. Maybe I didn't. May I need to do that this time. I'm going to do conditioner this time instead of just water. So I mentioned in yesterday's video about some events. Um, so like I had said, uh, my mother-in-law has been occasionally on Saturdays um, typically Saturday night, um, we've been, for the last couple months, Saturday nights we go over and have dinner with them. And then, um, not every weekend, but some weekends she'll take one of the kids for the night. Um, and then the next morning, either I go pick that child up or she brings the child back to me. Um, just kind of depends. Uh, a couple weeks ago, she had my daughter, and we have been struggling so hard. Well, last year we struggled with it. We've been struggling with this for a while. Um, since first grade, my daughter has, uh, since forever, my daughter has hated her hairbrush, but she always wanted long hair. And finally, after my dad passed away, we convinced her to cut her hair. And it looked cute, and we're like, okay, it's going to be easier for you to take care of. It shouldn't be as many tangles. You should be okay. Well, that was short-lived. And she continued to fight getting her hair brushed. And it's just been an uphill battle. And then, so that was in first grade. And recently, we've been having issues. She's at that age where she doesn't want to take showers. Um, she does take a shower. She doesn't want. She just wants to take baths. She doesn't really want to wash her hair. If she does wash her hair, she's not rinsing it well. Then come to find out, I mean, although both of my kids um, have an expensive shampoo that is bought only at the salon, like their shampoo costs more than my shampoo, and she hasn't been using it. She has been using Bath and Body Works body. Um, wash. So back when Bath and Body Works had their big semi-annual sales this summer, I took her over there to see if, you know, I could kind of bribe her with the, okay, you can go in and this is the 75% off or 75 or 80% off shelf. Go ahead, pick out whichever ones you like. Like literally we bought her eight eight bottles of body wash and this was in June and she doesn't even have two left because she was mixing them together she was using a lot of it and we found out later that she was actually using them to wash her hair as well so she was majorly drying out her hair she refused to brush her hair because I mean she was using body wash to wash her hair so it was making her hair like straw and then no matter what kind of um, detangler we would use on her hair she'd always scream that we were pulling her hair 
Um, so anyways, a few weeks ago, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law actually lived with my mother-in-law after my mother-in-law's husband passed away this summer. They moved in with her so she wouldn't be alone. And so they moved in with her and they took my daughter for the night, my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. I like this one. I gotta smell to make sure. Yep, this one is the conditioner. Um, I'm like, I've had it. She, My daughter had some knots in her hair that were horribly, horribly bad. I'm like, can you guys see if you can get this taken care of? Because I know she's been okay for my mother-in-law. She'll let my mother-in-law sometimes more so than me and sometimes my sister-in-law do her hair. And so they threw her in the bathtub. They had her, um, they put in like a deep, deep, deep conditioner in her hair. They tried to get out all the tangles, but they just couldn't get out all of the tangles. There were some that were just so bad. And her, my daughter's hair is super, 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 super thick. And that's an understatement. Um, so with all that, they decided to take her to the salon and get a hair trim. She did not get a huge haircut, but they trimmed her hair and um, they got her hair trimmed up, looking nice. They got all the mats cut out, as well as they thin the lady thinned out her hair a lot. And my sister-in-law showed me pictures of the floor, and they're like, we were surprised she still had hair on top of her head after the lady got done thinning her hair out because it, there was so much on the floor. And they also took her to, um, oh, this hair goes this way. They also took her to Walmart and picked out uh, a shampoo and a conditioner that goes with it and also a leave-in conditioner detangler and they have her convinced that this is like magic detangler conditioner and all this kind of stuff. So she has been letting me brush her hair daily, make sure all the tangles stay out. Literally now brushing her hair used to take like an hour almost sometimes. Now it only takes like five minutes at most. So anyways, getting to the story. Um, this past weekend, my kids um, they decided to take both of my kids just to give us a break. Um, the kids have this full week off and Friday they were in each other's hair as soon as they got off the bus from school and it, the one was trying to play with the other, the one didn't want to play with the uh, the other didn't want to play with the one, and then the one would wrestle with the other and it just, it, it was a big, like it was, you two need to go to bed now type situation and I'm thinking this is how Thanksgiving break is starting off and we have a week and so just to kind of let me rejuvenate myself as well as I am a Christmas shopper all year round um, to save money I typically start shopping for Christmas the day after Christmas like for the next year um, this past year between Christmas and New Year, I got some really, really good deals at like Walmart and stuff. And I was getting stuff that is, it's not like food items. It's things like makeup brushes and stuff like that for my nieces or like body washes, things that don't expire. And so I got some really good deals and I told them, I'm like, I need to get through my Christmas closet. I A, need to see what I have for my kids. B, if there's anything else I need to get for my kids see who I all have left that I need to shop for for extended family as well as um, I our kids as of now are going back to school on Monday the school district has them coming back on Monday it's the plan but you don't know what's going to happen you don't know if for whatever reason we have to quarantine teacher has to quarantine the school gets shut down between now and Christmas so I decided that we're going to send teacher Christmas presents to school when they go back after break. Um, I've already informed the teachers. I'm like, these will be coming to you 
you can wait and open them later if you want to, or you can open them right away. That's up to you. I just want to make sure that you get them. And so both of the teachers replied back, thank you, you're so sweet. Um, so anyways, um, last night I was able to get through my whole closet. I was able to organize stuff. I was able to put my son's piles of stuff here, my daughter's pile, and assess who has what. Um, one of my son's big items is still in North Dakota, which reminds me I need to get a hold of Heather to get a hold of the lady I bought it from to get it delivered to my mom because it's in Fargo. Um, so I got to get that scheduled and then hopefully my mom and her friend can get it apart and find a box big enough that when my mom flies down here for Christmas, she can put it in a box and then check it with the airline. It'll cost to ship it down here about a hundred bucks, but if she brings it and we just put it in a box, so it's not like it's even a suitcase that she needs to take back. Um, she puts it in a box, she can check it on the airline for $25, so that's a significant difference. Um, but anyway, she's got other Christmas presents that she's got to bring that are kind of larger anyways, so they'll be able to kind of fill in the box area to kind of cushion stuff. So that's what our plan is. With that, either that or if her brother goes up there again between now and Christmas and he can probably maybe bring it back. But I digress. So I was able to get through everything. I was able to figure that stuff out. And I wasn't feeling that great last night. Um, my sister-in-law forgot I'm allergic to pork and all they said was they were making brisket for supper and I just assumed beef brisket. They forgot I was allergic to pork and they had bought a pork brisket. So, needless to say, my stomach wasn't feeling the best last night, so I got through that stuff. I decided to go to bed early. I was up and down all night last night. I didn't really sleep that much. I finally started feeling better around 6 in the morning and fell back asleep. At about 9.30, I get a phone call from my mother-in-law, like, uh, you need to come pick the kids up. It's not an emergency, but you need to come pick the kids up as soon as you can. And I'm, I go huh I'm like I'm half asleep I didn't sleep well last night and she's like uh brother-in-law has been exposed and I'm like what are you talking about as I stated before my brother-in-law is a long-haul truck driver and he drives with a partner the partner called at nine o'clock this morning to say that he and his family all tested positive for COVID <sighs> so me and my kids were around my brother-in-law last night. My brother-in-law said he's been feeling fine. He doesn't think he has it because he has had absolutely no symptoms. But they wanted me to come pick up the kids so that they could go get tested. Um, which was fine by me after I found out. But I mean, my brother-in-law is furious, so is my sister-in-law. Because my sister-in-law had been around their family this week. And obviously my brother-in-law being a long haul truck driver stuck in a semi all week with his partner and come to find out all week his partner was feeling sick. Did not say a single word. Apparently he had a headache all week. He had a sore throat all week. Um, he never took his temperature so he doesn't know if he had a fever or not. He was kind of having like body aches and body chills and he's like, oh, I just thought it was a cold. And the reason why they went and got tested was because they have a foster daughter who is incredibly, she, she's very good at softball. And then she's involved in a select softball league. And being that it's a select league, they don't have as many rules and regulations when it comes to COVID. And come to find out Friday sometime uh, they found out, they got word, that four people on her team tested positive. So therefore, this whole family went and got tested. It's the mom, the dad, a biological son who is an immune compromised, medically fragile child with a heart defect, um, an adopted son, and then the foster daughter. So it's a, it's a family of five. All of them went and got tested because of the medically fragile son. I mean, the medically fragile son has night nurses that come and take care of him at night, 
while everybody sleeps to make sure um, his feeding pump goes okay, to make sure if he has any cardiac events at night. I mean, he's severely medically fragile. He has it too. The whole family has it. All five of them have it. Well, like I said, brother-in-law and sister-in-law was with the family all week, although the only one that seemed to not be feeling well all week was um, the adopted son and the other son there at the same preschool. And both of them had like really runny nose, super congested, a cough, and they just thought it was allergies. So both of those kids went to school all week. Um, mom has been feeling fine. Um, foster daughter didn't start She's tested positive, but she didn't start feeling bad until Friday. And they don't know if it was just because psychologically, like knowing I've been exposed to this, got started feeling the symptoms, or if she actually just did start feeling the symptoms on Friday. As of right now, mom still feels fine. But dad obviously now has to quarantine, but all week he felt sick. So I went and picked up the kids. My mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and brother-in-law all went and got tested right away. We should know back tomorrow. Um, they went down into Austin. They were looking. I know that there's some um, rapid, like, you can get your results within 15 to 30 minutes, depending upon how busy they are. I don't know if they couldn't find one of them or they were just too expensive for them. So in our area, the places they called all said that it would be 48 to 72 hours before they could get the results back. So that was looking at Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, the place that they ended up going to said that they will get their results in 24 hours or less. Um, my husband talked to my brother-in-law earlier and they still did not have the results back yet. So they know that it'll be tomorrow sometime. And they're hoping that it's a good sign that they're they're being more due diligent like obviously if it tested positive within like an hour or two they're going to call you and say it's positive but being they haven't called yet that they're still waiting to see if it turns positive i'm unsure how this exactly works i don't know if it's kind of like the strep test where they can do that quick rapid 10 15 minute test but then they take another sample and they have it sit for 24 hours because in our case in my kids cases before um, their tonsils came out, both of them, that rapid test would always be negative, but then the 24-hour test would come back positive. I don't know why that always happened with both of my kids, but it did. My husband and I both, the rapid test, typically not even 10 minutes later, usually five minutes later, they're coming back and saying, mine did. So I don't know if it's similar to that, like where they, they can do like a rapid test and then they do like the longer test, or I'm unsure how that is, so I'm hoping this is a good sign. So, right as of right now, we're kind of quarantined. I mean, we don't really have any um, where to go. The kids and I uh, came home today and then just hung out today. I have things for them to do. Uh, part of their teacher present is something that they have to paint. So I'm thinking we're going to be painting tomorrow. That will give them something to do to keep their mind kind of off uh, we can't go anywhere tomorrow type thing. Um, we did talk about, my husband and I talked about possibly going over to his uncle's house while his uncle's at work. Um, my kids swing sets over at his uncle's house. So taking them over there while he's, their uncle's at work and just letting them play on the swing set for a little while. That way, like if they get germs on the swing set, it's their swing set, it's at his house. They're the only ones that play on it. Um, so we talked about possibly doing that to let them just get some energy out. I know like in around our neighborhood they've been going outside and playing a lot but I don't want to do that and risk that brother-in-law is positive because if brother-in-law is positive then all three of us need to go get tested and the kids can't return back to school until they have two negative tests. So we'll have to see how that goes and that's kind of where Thanksgiving right now is kind of up in the air because mother-in-law, brother-in-law, and sister-in-law, they're getting tested today. Or they got tested, yeah, today. They'll get the results back tomorrow. Then they're going to go again Wednesday morning because they have to have the two negative tests. Uh, my mother-in-law works home health, 
so she'll have to have two negative tests to go back to work. So the thought process is they will go back Wednesday morning, so they should get the results back Thursday morning, and then that'll decide if we're going to still have Thanksgiving or not with them. And if they come back negative, obviously we'll probably go ahead and have Thanksgiving with them. Um, but also if they test, the other reason why they're test wanting to do it is because they don't want to get my husband sick because my husband obviously can't be around us. And they also need to go help. Um, there's this man that my mother-in-law used to be married to and my brother-in-law basically he was like his dad. His dad actually abandoned him and my mother-in-law. And then after that my mother-in-law got married to this man, kind of like a Nana situation where my father-in-law married Nana, they ended up getting divorced, but we're still close to Nana. Um, well, my brother-in-law, my husband lived with his dad growing up, so that's why he's not close to this man. He knows this man, and we do things with this man, but my brother-in-law sees this man as his dad. Well, he needs some help with some stuff, so my husband's supposed to go help him. My husband doesn't want to go help him if my brother-in-law's positive. And my brother-in-law doesn't want to even go over there if he's positive. So they're just kind of monitoring stuff right now. And as well as, you know, even if they get that second negative, we're going to just kind of keep an eye on the kids. If everything's fine and dandy, the kids will go back to school as planned on Monday. If um, brother-in-law does turn out to be positive, then... I'll have to contact the school, the kids and I will go get tested since we were the ones around him, and then go from there. And then, so the kids, this would be a week of quarantine out of school, and then next week would be a week of quarantine out of school. So then they could go back the third week, and then they'd have two weeks until Christmas break. It's just a big cluster, as well as my mom's coming in this time frame too, because my mom's coming down for Christmas this year. It's just... It's a madhouse of a year. It's just this whole year sucks. So, now this is kind of a long-winded explanation. And no, the not feeling good last night was not because I have it. I have no other symptoms. Yes, I know you can get it with just one symptom. It was definitely pork. Um, since I've had surgery, there was one other instance I ate pork and it was the exact same thing. I instantly started feeling bloated, not to be too much information, I instantly started feeling bloated and just very uncomfortable. And my body, your body after bypass surgery, work, it works slower in most cases for digestion because you're being malnourished. So it takes longer for stuff to get out where before surgery, if I'd eat anything with pork, I'd be in that restroom within minutes of eating it. Where now it takes longer and it's actually more pain involved so anyways i ate it i did feel a little bit better and then i ate something else and then i just felt horrible again after that but like i said around six o'clock was kind of my turning point and i felt i felt okay after six o'clock um some, some gas got released a lot of gas are released, so the pressure on my stomach, like, I still am bloated. I can still feel it, but a lot of pressure got released, and once that pressure got released, I felt better. It, and in this time frame, I was also taking, like, gas X to try to help speed things through. But um, after that happened, like I said, I went back to bed, and when my mother-in-law called to wake me up, I, or to come get the kids, I was feeling a lot better. So I'm sorry this was long-winded. I hope everyone has a great day, and I will see you all later. Bye.